And finally on my week, one of the most polluted zip codes in Michigan is in southwest Detroit. It's 48217. And while it's home to heavy industry, it's also home to residents who have been educating themselves and fighting for years in order to have a cleaner environment. And recently, some art students from the University of Michigan helped illustrate the area's struggles in a very visible way. Here's a look from Detroit Performs. Our community, 42.17, is known for its stink. This is the most polluted zip code in the state of Michigan. Our community should not be casualties for industry's greed. Based on the recent election and funding for Great Lakes environmental issues, uh, last year in the call for new courses, I decided it was good timing for us to get the students out and partner with uh, some local communities to bring in, uh, environmental issues more out into the public sphere. This isn't our voice. This is the community's voice. We go to school at University of Michigan. We don't live here. And we are painting this mural, but we can only learn from the people that live here because this is really their situation. The mural came about after I was asked to do what we call toxic tours by the University of Michigan. And I took a group of students and some professors on a tour around the industry that has been plaguing our community and been one of our challenges for years with their emissions of pollution that is impacting my community. Miss Teresa Landrum is extremely passionate and inspiring and so I thought she'd be a perfect person to connect with for this class. This is one of the first African American establishments after World War II, but I grew up in this. I've always noticed the smells, so we accepted it as a norm, but it's not normal. I really feel disheartened that this has gone on so long from the industries and nobody paid attention. That minority, low-income communities are being impacted so severely by these industries that pollute. Residents in this area, they're fighting a system that allows them to be and sacrifice so. And they're not doing good because their lives are inundated with the pollution and the health impacts from all of it. Students have certainly noticed you know, depending on which way the wind is blowing, you'll notice more odor than other days. Uh, but to hear the stories of, you know, particulates that are, you know, covering cars, and it's not hard to imagine covering lungs. The pollution that is coming from these surrounding industries is having a serious impact on our health. We see a high rate of lung cancer in this area. We see a high rate of COPD in this area. We have a high rate of asthma among our children, as well as adults. Working with these students have been wonderful because after the toxic tour, they said, what can we do? They decided among themselves that we need to do something. It's part of a growing environmental awareness that students have to go through and how can they become more empathetic to the folks that are living with the pollution uh, because we're all taking part in this because we're all, you know, living with cars and you know, we all use electricity, and so pollution is just, it's hidden from most of us most of the time. A lot of these situations are in communities of color, communities of low income, and so really wanted to target the injustices that lie there, and Miss Landrum helped us a lot with that. This mural speaks because it gives us a voice. It creates conversation. People are stopping and asking, well, what is the mural about? How did it come about? Well, then we can discuss, well, there's been pollution issues out here all the time. I was born and raised out here, but I've also been working with the community for about 15 years. So in all of these years of working together, this mural is one of the things that has been one of the high points. It's just about initiating change as best as a mural can within the community, basically to promote justice. Also, it was really important for us, to be, for the community members, to be able to see themselves and their situations within the mural. On the very far left, we have kind of the silhouette of the looming industry, and coming out of that is the monster of industry who has the hazardous sign for the eyes. The uh, smoke coming out of his mouth is the basically representation of the pollution, the pollution on his back with the industry as well. And then we have the three figures and we wanted to represent different age groups 
um, from the community that was really important to us as well and uh, specifically also representing um, women because Miss Landrum was saying that a lot of the people that are involved in this fight are women and they're all in a fight towards stopping this big monster of industry and um, really stating their claim on um, the power that they have with their voice. And then the sunflowers that we have are kind of like a representation of more of a brighter hope. Miss Landrum was telling us how they have done protests before with sunflowers on their signs with messages in between. So we took that and added it in and then mirrored that with the gears on the other side. The images speak to me because it lets you know that community, we're becoming aware and we're tired. And it addresses that we need somebody to stand up and say, stop. We're telling the companies, we're telling the city, we're telling the state, we're telling the federal government, work with us and help stop this pollution and industry from encroaching more and more on communities. I hope that the people can just really see that their fight is recognized and that there are people who are with them, supporting them, and that their work every day matters. Inspiring change is, you know, get, making topics visible and letting people uh, see and understand it and, and acknowledge that there is a problem and, you know, how can they come together to help fight it. And, you know, Teresa will be, continue to be, I'm sure, a strong voice in the community.